Thank you for tuning in to Save Our Souls Ministries Bible Study. Today, uh, you'll be here with uh, Brother Roby, and this is Brother Maksud. And today, we're going to finish off the Law of God, the Ten Commandments. This will be part two. And what we're discussing today is what is the true Sabbath day, according it's to the, the Bible. Day. A lot of people argue and debate on whether there is a Sabbath day or if the Sabbath day is Saturday or Sunday. And all we're here to do is to dive into the scriptures and show that it's important that we let the Bible explain what day is the Sabbath day. Yeah. And we obviously believe that the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week and not the first day of the week as everyone else keeps it. Um, we just follow the Ten Commandments. And the problem is with the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And yeah. we believe that we should obey God because yeah. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yep. So we want to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to show today with this Bible study that the Sabbath day could be no other day but the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday Amen. and not the first day. Amen. And it's very important that we, we, we set the foundation that we have to worship God have to. the proper way. Have to. And let's use uh, some scripture, John chapter 4, verse 24, to Amen. show that. John chapter 4, verse 24. Mm -hmm. God is a spirit, mm -hmm. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to do it in spirit and in truth. Amen, brother. We cannot just make up our own ways of worship, celebrate him. So we are going to honor him and worship him according to truth, which is the Bible. Right. So what we're saying is this is a big issue on whether you obey him by obeying the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Amen. It has to be according to truth. Because we know that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, mm. but the end thereof is the ways of death. Amen. That's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. So and we just want to follow what the Bible says. And today, that's what we're going to show in this Bible study today. And we'll start off with a question that Jesus asked the people who would break his commandments. Matthew right. chapter 15, verse 3. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? That's yeah. what Jesus is asking people today yes, who yes. break the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments, which is remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, just to keep the tradition yep. because they worship on the first day of the week and they say they do that. They set aside the first day of the week because they do that to honor God for his resurrection. Mm. Now that tradition is causing them to break the break fourth it. commandment of yes, the Ten Commandments. Yes, it is, and he brother. said, Jesus says, why do you do that? Right. Verse seven, Matthew 15, verse 7, 8, and 9. Look at Jesus' response to those people who break his commandments just to keep the tradition. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7, 8, and 9. Mm -hmm. Ye hypocrites, mm -hmm. will did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, uh -huh. and they honor me with their lips. Jesus. But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Notice that the Bible says Jesus calls them hypocrites. hypocrites. He says they speak about me with their mouth and their lips, mm -hmm. but their hearts far from me. Far. They're worshiping me in vain mm -hmm. because they're keeping their traditions. Right. Let's also back that up with Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, For will ye reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Is that what you're doing? Rejecting the commandment of God to keep your own tradition mm -hmm. by you setting aside the first day of a week for whatever reason you say so, but yet you're not setting aside the day that the Bible says to do it. Right. You are full well rejecting the commandment to keep mm. your tradition. Forward. And obviously Jesus says that you're a hypocrite. That's Jesus. why this issue is big. And I don't understand how it's controversial. Mm. If we would just rightly divide the word of truth right. and decide to obey God rather than man, right. we would not have to be in this situation. Amen, brother. So today in this Bible study, what we want to do is show and answer the question, what day does the Bible say is the Sabbath day? What day? Not what day do I say or Mark Sue says mm -hmm. or anyone else says what day does the Bible say the Bible. is the Sabbath day the Bible. because the whole matter is this Jesus said if you love me you'll keep my commandments yeah. so if we want to love God and we desire to obey God because we call him Lord, Lord. we'll desire to obey his commandments Amen, this is the ten commandments that we're talking about but this one is the fourth mm -hmm. remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy Keep in mind, we want to obey that. In order to obey that, we got to find out what day is the Sabbath. We have to, yep. Amen. What day is it? So let's look at Exodus chapter 20, uh -huh. verse 10, verse 11, will actually show us what day is the Sabbath day. Exodus chapter 20, verse 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day 
is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Notice that it says that the seventh day. That's what it says. Not brother. the first day of the week. Nope. Not the third day of the week. Nope. But the seventh day is the, the Sabbath seventh. of who? The, the Lord, Lord thy God. God. So the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Mm. Let's look at verse 11. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, uh -huh. the sea, and all that in them is, mm -hmm. and rested the seventh day. He rested when? The seventh day. So he rested the seventh day. Go ahead. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hollowed. So the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. He blessed and it. he hollowed it. Jesus. He made the earth and everything in it in six literal days. He sure did. On the seventh day, he, he hollowed it, Jesus. he rested, and he and he blessed it. So we know so far from verse 10 to verse 11 that it says specifically and so clearly that the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Yes, it does. Let's look at Exodus chapter 16. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 16, verse 26, and we'll also look at verse 30. Okay. Exodus chapter 16, verse 26 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. It says the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. Yep. Clearly says that the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. Gather all the other days, mm -hmm. but on the seventh day, the seventh day, is the Sabbath. Yes, it, it is. clearly says that. Look at Exodus 16, verse 30. Exodus chapter 16, verse 30. Uh huh. So the people rested on the seventh day. So the people rested on the first day. Seventh day. Third day. Seventh day. Notice that it says they rested on the seventh day. Sure did. Clearly in scripture, the Sabbath is the seventh day, and that is the day of rest. Now let's go back to creation. And see when God, what God said was the day, is the Sabbath day, and what day that he rested on and that he sanctified. Right. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Uh huh. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Mm -hmm. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Now, Brother Sue, does it say that he sanctified every day? No. Nope. Does it say he sanctified the first day? No, it doesn't. It says he sanctified the seventh day. Seventh. For some reason, God chose to bless and sanctify the seventh day. Amen. Not any other day. Yep. So we see clearly, the Bible says the seventh day mm -hmm. is the Sabbath day. And that's the day that God blessed and sanctified. Yes, he did. Scripture makes it very clear. Scripture Amen. Saying, yes. So the most Amen. common erroneous statements concerning the Sabbath day, we're going to go through some of them that you hear certain people say, and it's complete error about this Sabbath day topic. Mm. Number one, people say every day is the Sabbath day. That's what they say. We just made it clear that only the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Mm. If people want to say every day is now the Sabbath day, they need to show Scripture to provide the, the, the back it up. Yes. But if they don't do that, then they're making up their own things. Why? Because they want to break the commandment of God. Amen. We're showing, therefore, they truly don't love truth. They truly don't love it, Amen. Brother. Yep. Amen. Number two, they say Jesus is the Sabbath, mm. and the Sabbath is not a day, but it's a person. A person. Have you ever heard that, Brother Sue? Yeah, I heard that. Well, these people are saying that the Sabbath is now a person and not a day. Jesus. You will not find that nowhere in Scripture that not the one. Sabbath day went from being a day to a person. So right. if you are saying that or other people are saying that, it's straight error and it's error. not according to the truth. No. And I no. got to ask what spirit is giving you that answer. Right. Number three, they say that the Sabbath was only for the Jews. Mm. They say, oh, the Sabbath day is just for the Jews. The other nine of the Ten Commandments are for everybody, right. but the fourth commandment is only for the Jews. Well, let's go into Scripture and see what Jesus says about that so we can knock away the erroneous statements that people are saying. Right. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Amen, brother. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And what should happen is when you hear these excuses of why they want to break the Sabbath day or why they made the Sabbath day the first day, right. when you find that they're not scriptural or we have answers to some of the things that they're saying that go contrary to what they're saying, it should let you know that we should be obeying the fourth commandment, keep the Sabbath day holy. Amen. So, was the Sabbath day only for the Jews, Brother Sue? Let's see what Jesus says on this topic. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was made for the Jews. For man. Go ahead. 
and not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was made for man. man. Jesus answers that question. The Sabbath wasn't just made for Jews. It was made for man. man. Because when God was creating the heaven and the earth in the first six, in the first day, first six days, on the seventh day he rested. Now he made the Sabbath day for Adam and Eve who was not yet considered Jews. None. He made it for Amen. man. Amen. That's Jesus' own words. Mm. So that settles it. The Sabbath day wasn't only for Jews. Right. He made it for mankind. Amen, brother. You always hear you'll hear people say there are only nine commandments now since they only mentioned nine in the New Testament. There's nowhere in scriptures we'll hear them called the mm. nine commandments. No way. And I don't believe you would say that they're called the nine commandments. Never. You'll hear people say Christians are under the new covenant, so the Sabbath day was changed mm -mm -mm. to Sunday. I agree that somebody changed it, and we yeah. know that the Catholics admit that they changed it. Right. So, but since they say that since the Christians are under the new covenant, it was changed to the first day. There's nowhere in the Bible where it shows that the Sabbath day was changed to the first day. Now, once but we're if we're under the new covenant, mm. let's look what the new covenant is in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 and verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will make a new covenant mm -hmm. with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Right. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law mm -hmm. in their inward parts Jesus. and bright in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So the new covenant is he'll put the law in their heart. What yes. law? The law, the law of God, the Ten Commandments, it will not be changed at all. That law will be put and written in your heart. Amen. But there is no change. If anyone understands covenants, the covenant cannot come into effect until there's the shedding of blood. Right. So if you admit that they changed it yep. after Christ died, yep. then that means it couldn't have been part of the covenant because you're not allowed to make no changes or add anything to a covenant. Once the blood is already shed, right. then shed? what was agreed upon mm. is stays there. Yes. So if it was changed after Jesus Christ died and resurrected, therefore it's proof that it wasn't part of the new covenant. It's proof right there. The new covenant was written. New covenant was uh, uh, once the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now it's there. It's solidified. It's mm -hmm. there. You cannot add nothing to a covenant no. after you have already shed the blood. So if you admit that it was changed after Jesus died, I agree with you, mm -hmm. but it wasn't part of the new covenant. It wasn't part of the covenant. So people also say that the Ten Commandments was nailed to the cross and they try to use Ephesians chapter 2 verse 15 and they use Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 through 17 and we'll touch on that. They also say it doesn't matter if we obey it. Mm. But Jesus says, why call me Lord, Lord, if you're not going to do what I say? Why? Why would you call him Lord if you're not going to do what he says? Why? So questions I ask to those who sanctify a Sunday as a day of worship. I always ask them, number one. Why do you go to church on Sunday? Right. I get the common answer that it's because it's the Christian Sabbath. Right. But Brother Masu, you know as well as I know that there's nowhere in the Bible where it calls a Christian Sabbath. No way, brother. No They'll tell way. you that we honor Jesus on the first day of the week since it's the day he rose. That's the answer. But there's right. no scripture for that. No scripture. Man. Number two, so is Sunday or Saturday the seventh day of the week? Here we That's go. That's what I asked. Here we go. Now, the Sabbath is Saturday. We already proved that. Yes. So, is Sunday or Saturday the seventh day of the week? Amen. Sunday is definitely the first day of the week. I asked them that. Why? Because they already said already they know it's the first day of the week because that's when Jesus rose and that's why they go. Yeah. Does the Bible say that the Sabbath is the first day or the seventh day? Mm. Right? We know. We, we know that the Bible says that the Sabbath is the seventh day. Yes. They use the answer to say, well, it was changed to the first day for the Christians. Yep. When was the first day sanctified according to scripture? Right. According to scripture. According to scripture, when was the first day sanctified? Never in scripture will you ever one find time. Is there anywhere in the New Testament that says that the Sabbath day has been changed to the first day of the week? No. Nope. Nowhere, Nowhere in the New Testament where it says that it was changed. Uh, number six. Did Jesus ever say that the Sabbath day was no longer needed to be observed? Never said that. He's never said that. Not You'll Jesus. never find that. Not Jesus. Seven. Did his apostles keep the Sabbath day after the death of Jesus? Yes, they did. The scriptures show that, and we'll show that later on. Amen. Eight, is there anywhere in the New Testament that says the apostles sanctified the first day of the week to honor Christ for his resurrection? Nope. There's nowhere in scripture nowhere. that says that. Not in this Bible. Did Jesus ever say he is the Lord of the first day? Never did. Never ever said he's the Lord of the first day. And number 10, is the first day observance a tradition of men, or is it a biblical command? Tradition. 
It's a tradition. Amen, brother. That alone, those questions, those answers should settle the fact that we should obey the fourth commandment. Mm -hmm. It's the seventh day of the week. Right. And we're asking you, why do you not do it? Right. So let's look at some scriptures that show that the Sabbath day is in the New Testament. Right. If we can find some scriptures in the New Testament that's showing that the Sabbath day is in the New Testament, let's look at it. Let's look at Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Amen, bro. Luke chapter 4, verse 16, when it mentions the Sabbath day in the New Testament. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Uh-huh. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Uh -huh. And as his custom was, mm -hmm. he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. It's referring to Jesus and said it was his custom Jesus. to go into the synagogue That's what say, brother. on the Sabbath day. Sabbath. So on the seventh day of the week is God's custom. God manifest in the flesh. It was his custom to go into the synagogue, which would be equivalent to our church now. Mm. It was his custom to go when? On the seventh day. Amen, brother. By tradition, the people are doing it now on the first day. First That's day. their custom. Yeah. Now, people walk around with the bracelet and say, what would Jesus do? Right. Jesus would go to the church right. on the seventh day. Seventh on the day. Sabbath day. Amen. According to Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Yep. Now, let's see if his followers, his apostles, let's see what day they chose. What was their custom that they went into the synagogue? Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Amen. Acts Amen. chapter 17, verse 2. Amen, brother. Amen. This is very important. We want to follow Christ. We want to follow what his disciples did and his mm -hmm. apostles did. And so far, we're seeing that they, they it was their custom to go to church, to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Yes, it was. Apostle Paul's custom. Let's go. Acts 17, 2. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Notice it says it was his custom. It was his manner. And this is three Sabbath days. Mm. Why did it just say three days in a row? Right. It said three Sabbath days because Paul went to the synagogue, to the church on the Sabbath day. Why? Because he was obeying God yes. and the Ten Commandments and he was keeping the fourth commandment. Yes. So the was. question is, a lot of people say to me, Brother Sue, they say, that was only Jews. Only Jews did that. Mm. So if we could show in the scriptures that Jews and Gentiles was scripture. going to the synagogue on the Sabbath, it should show it. We can show and it. most of the time when I bring it up, I say even the Gentiles, went, they said, no, it was only Jews. Mm. Let's use this Bible today to show that it was Jews and Gentiles who also was going to the church on the Sabbath day. Amen. Both Jews and Gentiles went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. First, let's look at Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, this is after Jesus died and resurrected. We're going to see both Jews and Gentiles went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Acts chapter 13, verse 42 through 44. Acts chapter 13, verse 42 through 44. Mm -hmm. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentile besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Notice verse 42. The Jews came out of the synagogue. The Gentiles, Gentiles. it says, besought that these words might be preached to them mm. tomorrow. The next Sabbath. It says the next Sabbath day. Notice Jews and Gentiles. The Gentiles were saying, no, come back next Sabbath. We want you to preach these words unto us. The next Sabbath, the next that Sabbath. is said. Jews and Gentiles. Why didn't they say the next day if they was keeping the first day? Right. If they was keeping the first day and it was and it was changed, why wasn't they saying the first day just come, come tomorrow? Right. They, teach us. they said the next Sabbath. next Sabbath. Look at verse 43 and 44. Verse 43 and 44. Now, when the congregation was broke up, mm -hmm. many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Notice they were still in the grace of God, grace even of God. though they still was going to church on the Sabbath. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath day uh -huh. came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Notice it says the next Sabbath day they came that, the whole city, the whole city together to hear the word of God. They came together, together on the Sabbath day, the whole city, whole city. Jews and Gentiles. Yes, they That's did. New Testament scripture. Yep. Let's look at Acts chapter 14, verse 1, mm. to see if there was Jews and Greeks going to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Acts chapter 14, verse 1, uh -huh. and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. Both Jews and Greeks mm -hmm. was going there. Yep. We see that, right? Yep. Let's look at Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. And 4. And 4. 
And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, mm -hmm. and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Uh -huh. Verse 4. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. Notice it says Jews, and it says Greeks. Amen. Revelation, or sorry, Acts chapter 18, verse 4. Acts chapter 18, verse 4. Acts chapter 18, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And he reasoned in a synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So listen, Paul reasoned every Sabbath. That's mm -hmm. when he taught. And it said he reasoned every Sabbath, not every day, every, every Sabbath, day. and persuaded Jews and and Greeks. Jews so and both Greeks. Jews and Greeks was going to church yes, to the synagogue were. on the Sabbath. That's this is saying. New Testament. New Testament, now, brother. If the Sabbath was no longer to be observed or to be taken away, mm -hmm. you would think Jesus would say that it would be taken yep. away. Why would Jesus be referring to the Sabbath day mm. after he's going to be gone right. if it was not going to be observed? Right. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24, uh -huh. verse 20. And Jesus was talking about the end times and signs of the, uh, uh, of the uh, um, temple being torn down and all that. Notice that he refers to the Sabbath day. If the Sabbath was no longer to be observed, he would not have mentioned the Sabbath. Yes. Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. Matthew 24, verse 20. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Why would he mention Sabbath day if it was not going to be still observed? Amen. He, would, he would have told him not to observe the Sabbath day. Word, brother. But he noticed that he said that, and that was going to be after he was gone. All right, common scriptures misused to dismiss the truth about the Sabbath. I want to make some points before we get into some of these scriptures that they try to use to say that we don't have to keep the Sabbath. No Jew would have ever argued about whether or not we should keep the Sabbath day or not. not to this day, Jew. they still keep it. So yes, they, they, they would have never argued about whether somebody was going to have to uh, keep the Sabbath day holy. Right. No one argued, Gentiles or Jews, ever argued whether or not there would be that we have to worship on Sabbath. They never still argue. do it to this day. Yes. So there would, I want to make that clear. There would never be found an argument on whether or not we should obey the fourth commandment, the Sabbath day, keep it holy. They would right. never argue that. Never. Paul, who kept the Sabbath day, would have never told anyone to break one of the Ten Commandments. He would have never. He would have never did, and we have to make that did. clear. So, any scriptures that someone tries to use to try to say that we would not have to uh, obey the Fourth Commandment, Paul would have never ever told anyone to break one of the Ten Commandments ever right. at all. So we we have to say that. And I want to go to this. Jesus would have never said that because look what he said in Matthew chapter five, verse seventeen through nineteen. Amen. So before we get some of these scriptures that people try to use and twist to say that we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, we're making it clear that no Jew would have ever argued on whether or not we have to obey the Sabbath day. They Amen. keep that. Paul would have never argued it. And look what Jesus said to settle the whole issue. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Don't even think that I come to destroy the law. What law? The law of God, the Ten Commandments. Amen. Don't even think. That I come to destroy the law. Right. Go ahead. All the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I'm not going to destroy them. I'm going to fulfill them. I'm going to live them out. I'm going to carry them out. Right. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth pass away. Go ahead. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. So heaven and earth has to pass away first. Yes. Until that happens, not one dot of the I or cross of the T shall be taken away from the law. Yep. That's what Jesus said. Uh -huh. So we're talking about the law of God, the Ten Commandments. Right. Until heaven and earth pass away, it shall remain. Right? Amen, brother. And how do we know he's talking about the Ten Commandments when he's talking about the law? Look at verse 19. Verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of the least commandments. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments. Amen. Go ahead. And shall teach men so. And teach men to break one of the commandments. Mm. Go ahead. He shall be called the least in the kingdom He's of heaven. He's the least in the kingdom of heaven. But go ahead. But whosoever shall do mm -hmm. and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So if you do the Ten Commandments yeah. and keep them, keep you shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall teach them to break one of them. Right. Well, that's what people are doing. They're teaching them to break the fourth commandment. All obey all the other nine, but break the fourth. Yes, they are. And that's what they're doing. And Jesus said, don't do that. Yeah. So let's look at a couple of scriptures that people try to use to try to say that the Ten Commandments is taken away. Right. Colossians chapter 2. Mm. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. We'll go ahead and read that. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. Mm -hmm. 
And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. The handwriting of ordinances. Go ahead. That was against us, uh -huh. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So people say right there, the Ten Commandments is nailed to the cross. Mm. So notice it says blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Mm. The ordinances of handwriting was nailed to the cross. Right. Brother Sue, you and I know through thorough study that that's referring to the Mosaic laws, the Mosaic. ceremonial laws. Mosaic. But the scripture will verify that. It's not talking about the Ten Commandments, which was written by God right. with his finger, his finger written in stone, stone, now written in our hearts. Amen. Written by God. And then Moses had laws that he wrote in a book of ordinances and stuff. And ceremonies and all that. Yep. Those are nailed to the cross. Yes, they are. How do we know that they're talking about that? Go down to verse 16 and 17. Verse 16 and verse 17. Since they're nailed to the cross, go ahead. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day mm -hmm. or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now, now people say right there, see, don't let anyone judge you. They're nailed to the cross. It says Sabbath days there. We know through thorough study, if you write it by the word of truth, it's talking about the Mosaic laws. Right. In verse 16, it's talking about holy festivals, the Sabbath festivals. When it says mm. Sabbath days, it's talking about festivals. Yes. Now, how do we know that? Look at verse 17. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So the Mosaic laws and with the ceremonial laws is right. talking about shadows. Yes. We know according to ceremonial laws, they would bring a lamb mm -hmm. and that lamb was a representation or a shadow of who? Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the lamb of God. Hallelujah. So when they kept these holy convocations, these Sabbath days, festivals, it's not the same thing as a Sabbath day according to the Ten Commandments. It's Sabbath festivals. How do we know that? In verse 16 it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink. Some people or majority of people who think this is referring uh, they think it's referring to food. Right. They think it's referring to drinks. Oh, right. you can't judge me on what I drink. You can't judge right. me on what I eat. Right. This is why you must rightly divide the word yes. of truth. Hallelujah. This is talking about the meat offerings yes. and the drink offerings that are supposed to be, that, are, that was written out that we have to do according to the Mosaic laws right. during these festivals and ceremonies. Mm. That's what it's talking about. And when it's talking about respect of a holy day, Yom Kippur, and all these other holy days and monthly Sabbaths and all that. That's what it's referring to, not the Sabbath day of yeah. the fourth commandment. That's a memorial, right. not a shadow. Right. Amen. Right. How can we show that? Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 15 through 18. To show you exactly, Ezekiel 45, verse 15 through 18, to show you that Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, verse 16 and 17, is referring to the Sabbath that is the uh, uh, ceremonial Sabbath. Yep. It's something separate from the Sabbath day of the Ten Commandments. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 15 through 18. Ezekiel 45, verse 15 through 18. Mm -hmm. And one lamb out of the flock, out of 200, out of the fat pastures of Israel, for a meat offering, meat offering, and for a burnt offering, uh -huh. and for peace offerings, to make reconciliation for them, saith the Lord God. Uh -huh. All the people of the land shall give his oblation for the prince in Israel. Uh -huh. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings uh -huh. and meat offerings. Meat offerings. And drink offerings. Drink offerings. In the feast. In the feast. And in the new moon. New moons. And in the Sabbaths. And in the Sabbaths. All in all solitaries of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. He shall prepare the sin offering mm -hmm. and the meat offering mm -hmm. and the burnt offering uh -huh. and the peace offering mm -hmm. to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Verse 18. Thus saith the Lord God, in the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. 